would be kind of fun to try to take some solid pictures using the Game Boy camera. The one thing it has going for it is its unique aesthetic. You can always tell when a picture was taken using that camera. It's an interesting device, vastly outdated in every way. This means the process of taking those pictures and even getting them off of here at the highest quality possible to use them in any meaningful way, well, it's quite the process. The iPhone X takes 12 megapixel photos. That's 3,000 pixels by 4,000 pixels. This YouTube video that you're watching right now at its highest quality is 1080p. That's 1,920 pixels by 1,080 pixels. You know that resolution that YouTube offers, it's right above 1080p and right below 4K? It's called 1440p. Well, if you take that resolution and if you remove the zero, that's the resolution of just the screen of the Game Boy. That would be 160 pixels by 144 pixels. But like I said, that is just the screen. The Game Boy camera only takes up a portion of that screen. And that portion is 128 pixels across. And I got that by literally counting the pixels one at a time. That makes this camera roughly 0.017 megapixels or 17 kilopixels, which is a unit of measurement I just found out existed. It's also capable of exactly two bits of color. That's four different unique colors you have to work with, or really four shades of green. This also makes the contrast near impossible to control. If your subject isn't lit perfectly, images from the Game Boy camera either come out overblown or just too dark. The contrast and brightness sliders offer a little help. The auto adjustments are decent, but they are really slow to react. So sometimes you manually adjust only to have auto settings adjust even further, ruining your shot. God. <laughs> What's wrong? I'm not even gonna take that photo, it looks like I don't think you need me to tell you that this could be a really frustrating camera to try to take a picture with. But when you finally do manage to take a picture of something, you can make things look really cool. I've heard street photographers say that out of every 100 pictures, maybe one will be usable. Lucky for us, the Game Boy camera can hold a whole 30 before you need to start deleting some. <laughs> You might recall that the Game Boy screen is very hard to see. I had Will give me back our Game Boy Advance SP. It's the later model AGS-101 version, so it's backlit, not just frontlit. The image out of the Game Boy Advance SP is a little too good, so the pictures actually look worse in my opinion. Part of it could also be the Game Boy Color color palette on a screen that can handle way more colors. But the biggest problem is that the cartridge slot is on the bottom. So you have to take pictures upside down. And no matter how you spin it, the image will always appear upside down. I know, it was hard to wrap my head around it too. So this just ain't gonna work. I'll just have to hold the screen to the light when I wanna take a picture of something or only take pictures in the daytime. All of this fussing around made me order a Japanese Game Boy Light off of eBay. I've always been fond of the Game Boy Pocket form factor, and this was released only in Japan at the same time as the Game Boy Pocket, and it's the same thing as the Game Boy Pocket, it just has a backlit screen. As an original piece of hardware, I think it's dope as hell. If you want a really cool screen though, one that's even better than the Game Boy Light, check out Game Changer Mods on Etsy. He actually sold me my Game Boy camera a few weeks back at the Retro Game Expo. I had one, but the one that I had took awful pictures. I mean, I know they're usually bad, but something was clearly wrong with the one that I had. So I got another one and this one works a thousand times better. The key to taking good pictures with the Game Boy camera is contrast. Each pixel is only capable of one of four colors, so it's important to be able to distinguish between all of the parts of the image. When taking my portrait, I tried to light my face, but not my background, so I would stand out. But then you couldn't see my beautiful hair. So I splashed a little bit of light on the background, just enough to activate one of the darker green colors. The contrast slider can help bring out some more dynamic range or detail in some of the darker or lighter areas by way of a dither pattern, but only slight adjustments seem to work well. The brightness slider can help if an image is too over or underexposed, but the camera's auto adjustments does that already. If the image is too dark, 
the screen's refresh rate gets real slow and the viewfinder lags like crazy. Current digital cameras do this too, it's just not as extreme. Taking a picture of yourself feels real weird because the screen isn't mirrored, so it's super weird trying to line it up right. Oh my god. The lens on the camera is also very wide. I'd say probably about a 12 or a 15 millimeter. So you can forget about taking a picture of anything further than you could spit. This picture of a boat really shows off the best contrast the Game Boy camera has to offer, especially if you're tinkering around with those contrast and brightness sliders just a little bit. It kind of looks like a BIOS screen or a boot screen for a first generation Adobe program or something. Now, whenever you take a picture with your phone or with an actual camera, you wanna upload it, share it, send it to somebody. Ha <laughs> ha, not with this camera. You can transfer it to another person with a Game Boy camera via a link cable, or you can print it using the Game Boy printer like this is some Blade Runner sh Uh, well, well, when it works. But this is 2018. We gotta go the extra mile. I wanna be able to put this photo into Photoshop and blow it up to the size of a house. Or you know, so I could show it to you in this video, like I've been doing this whole time. My first plan to get this done was to try to capture the gameplay footage of the Game Boy at its native resolution. This meant that we couldn't have any software interference to try to upscale the image, blurring out all of the pixels. Sharp pixels are part of the aesthetic that we're looking for. I decided that the best way to do this with the equipment I mostly had already was to use a Game Boy Advance player on the GameCube with the GCHD, which we did a video on a few weeks back. The GameCube HD will allow me to capture footage straight out of the GameCube at 480p, which is the highest resolution that we're gonna get out of the GameCube. But the Game Boy is 144p. Unfortunately, the software that comes with the Game Boy Advance player does a really poor job of upscaling the image. Shout out to My Life in Gaming for a really well done, very informative video on how to get the best picture out of your Game Boy. It's an hour long video, but it's really well made and I highly recommend checking it out if you're interested in this stuff. To bypass the Game Boy Player's software, I got an action replay disc and a homebrewed program called Game Boy Interface, which will force the GameCube to output the Game Boy footage at 240p, which is the closest we're gonna get. However, I wasn't considering that both Elgato capture cards and my Acer monitor might be incapable of supporting anything lower than 480p. Thankfully, the beauty of this homebrew is that we don't even need to capture any footage because if you just hit X and then Z, it takes a screenshot and the screenshot is the native resolution of the Game Boy, 144p. And that screenshot just gets dumped right on the SD card. I wish I was filming my reaction when I figured this out because I was so happy that this worked. It made my life so much easier. I didn't have to go through all of that resolution nonsense with the video capture. From here, I can plop it into Photoshop. Look at how beautiful and crisp those pixels are. I'm not a fan of the Game Boy color color palette, I wanted to have that nice green scale look. I took the hex from this web page, but slightly modified the third green a little bit. I'll leave the hex on screen that I used. You can either use the paint bucket tool with continuous unselected, or the best way that I found to do it was to use a gradient map, and I'll tell you why in a second. Just make sure you spread the colors out so that they don't bleed into each other. After this, you can crop however you'd like and scale the image using nearest neighbor scaling to however big you want. And if you wanna do a whole bunch, just record an action of you editing one of the images and use a batch process to apply it to all of the other images in the folder. That's it, you're done. An action like this won't work with the paint bucket tool, that's why the gradient map is better, but that's it after that, you're done. If you're a complete psychopath, there's a more pure way for you to do this. The Game Boy interface has a way for you to dump save files onto your SD card. There are also devices made solely for ripping saves off of Game Boy cartridges, but those can be a little pricey. There is a program somebody made for ripping the bitmap images out of the Game Boy camera's save files once you get them on the computer, but they would just be black and white bitmap images, so I see no actual advantage to doing this over the screenshot method. 
And after all of that, you can finally share all of your Game Boy pictures with your friends. Woo! I'm actually very excited that I got this to work. It makes me feel really hipstery and stupid to take pictures with this thing, but I do think they look really cool. And who doesn't want a picture of themselves in beautiful two-bit color, 144 pixels? If you go for the green scale color palette, it's unmistakable where these pictures came from. And if you wanna make damn sure everybody knows, just leave the Game Boy camera logo on there. I'm also a little bit excited of the dump SRAM feature on the Game Boy interface. I might have to use this to take my Pokemon Yellow save file off of my emulator and dump it into an actual uh, Pokemon Yellow cartridge. That would be awesome. Anyway, from now on, I'll be that whack job out on a Friday night with my Game Boy camera taking pictures of stuff. It's a great way to get a lot of weird looks. One woman was like, all up in my shit. She like hit her husband. She's like, what, what's that guy doing? To people who didn't know any better, I probably looked like I was up to something. I had this giant thing. Well, not this one. I had this giant thing like this. Getting real close. Taking a million years to actually get a picture out of it. But anyway, what do you guys think about the Game Boy camera and all of this rigmarole to try to get a picture up on the internet? You can leave it in the comments below. You can at me on Twitter or all of this other social media garbage. Are you interested in trying to get the best picture out of your old consoles? Cause I am, and I'm probably gonna do videos on them. Anyway, we got new videos and live streams all the time. Our schedule's in a pinned tweet over on our Twitter. We also got more content coming your way. Don't forget about Wolf Den Live every Wednesday night where we talk to you guys. It's our live podcast. Finally almost done with Pokemon Yellow over on twitch.tv slash Wolf I'll probably finish it today or this week or with the next two times that I play it. Don't forget about Wolf Den Apparel. Get yourself a shirt, get yourself something that helps to support us. But of course, the most important thing that you can do is just to subscribe. That's all you need to do is free. And you could share this video with a friend, somebody who would think that this is cool so that all of my hard work it, yeah, maybe they'll appreciate me. Somebody's got to appreciate me. All right, thank you guys very much. Have a good week.